Let's head back to the voicemail of Truth and Reason. Uh, this one about the Browns' fourth quarter offense. Hi, right, it's Randall McKissack, lifelong Browns fan and frequent caller. So with this upcoming stretch and this schedule, I think it gives the Browns a good chance to win if we utilize what I call our fourth quarter B. If you remember back in the old days, teams that uh, featured the run with guys like Jerome Bettis, Barry Sanders, Eric Campbell, you know, Nick Chubb is a fourth quarter beast. Those guys in the fourth quarter, they pound the ball, you know, and take advantage of that skill to uh, run up the clock, get points, and just punish the defense. I think we need to quit passing so much, run the ball, use our fourth quarter beast to the maximum extent, and then when he gets tired, you got a trio of backs that you can put in there. You can put Hunt in there. You can put Johnson in there. You can put all our other guys in there. You don't have to just have those two and uh, manage these games by keeping those other teams off the field. Because our defense can't stop anybody, and you're going to have to keep the ball as much as you can. Okay, I'd like to hear your thoughts. As always, appreciate all of the voicemails. Let's welcome in Casey Kinneman from Dog Pound Daily. Um, Casey, by and large, I don't have a big problem with the play calling. Um, I get the thought, but we'll, we'll get to something that I want people to, to let sink in here in a minute. Just your thoughts on, on it. It's situational. You know, I think fans need to understand that. If the Browns would have had a lead. You'd have seen 24 out there. That's just the way it rolls. But they were in their two-minute offense, and when they're in a two-minute offense, you're going to see Kareem Hunt. His skill set is perfect for that, you know. He's perfect out of the backfield as a receiver. He's excellent in pass protection, and he just presents more of a threat in that two-minute scenario. But if it was a four-minute offense scenario where you're trying to grind the clock out, of course you're going to see Nick Chubb. But like, it's just situational. Well, the other thing is, is it, the game in the 80s and 90s, which I grew up on the field covering, um, it, it's different. It, the guys are bigger, faster, stronger. You, you, you know, you can't line up and blow somebody off the line of scrimmage all game long. Well, I'm not going to say that. It's not as easy to do. It was done a, a little differently back then. Um, the thing I want you to take a look at, this is from Spot Trek. Um, the most run-heavy teams. The Browns are second through four weeks. The Eagles have 153 rush attempts, Brown 149. But of those 153, 53 of them belong to Jalen Hurts. So in terms of running the ball at somebody with your running backs, the Browns are doing it significantly more than any other team in the league. Yeah, the Browns understand where their bread is buttered, you know. They, they understand the, the advantage they have with their running backs and the advantage they have with their offensive line and the marriage between the two and the different schemes they can use to accentuate each of their skill sets. The, the Browns are they're, they're coming downhill at you, and that, that's what it's going to be. You know, they that's going to be their their go to. They 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 know what their lead punch is always going to be. It's going to be the running game, and everything kind of works off that. You know, they, most of their passes are play action passes. It's based on the run game. So I, I know people want to see them run the ball more, but it's it's a gentle balance. Now I would agree the 35 attempts by Jacoby in the last game is about five more than I'm comfortable with. But you got to think of those 35, six of them were screen attempts, right. which is just another extension of the run game. So they're, they're trying to get the ball in the running back's hands as much as possible. And to be honest with you, that was the thing that was missing. You know, the he, Jacoby was just off on those screens. Mm -hmm. And if he, if they can connect on one or two of those, I think it opens a lot of things up. Yeah, it could have definitely changed the game. I think what they understood, the Falcons, is they were getting in the rush lanes. They were pushing the tackles back and kind of just obstructing Jacoby's view. And he doesn't really have another arm angle to switch to to get around those defenders, which is something he's going to have to adjust to now that he's put that on tape because the Browns still need to have the screen game as a pretty important element of, of their passing attack are those short passes to the running backs behind the line of scrimmage. And that's, you know, that's the adjustment we need to see. What, what do you do to get that screen game going? Because um, to your point, it, wasn't good. It, it wasn't good enough against the Falcons, I guess is the way to put it. Yeah, and there were several of them with tons of green grass in front of them if they could have connected. Like you said, one or two of those could have changed the entire complexion of the game.